So you've been dealing with wires, linear, straight wires. It's time to shake things up. Behold the disc. So here you see that there are four point charges. Okay, let me let me let me color them in as you contemplate your question. So there are four point charges here. Each is Q. All right. So you just imagine that hypothetically speaking, I can create a disc uh, and then I can put the charges at a single point and they won't move around. That's what they say. Okay. So there are four different points here. Uh, what is Q? Don't know. It could be 10 electrons, could be 100 electrons, could be two electrons. No information, but it's a fixed charge. So and all the charges are the same. Q. Okay. And then it's on the edge of an insulating disc of radius R. So when we see the term insulating disc, this means that this Q is not going to run around, okay? It's not going to like, you know, suddenly travel or, you know, be conducted away. So it means the position, position of Q along the disc is fixed. And it says here that the disc rotates, turning, at the rate of n revolutions per unit time. Okay, sure. What is the equivalent electric current at the edge of the disk? So if you want to think about current, for example, I will recall that current is equal to rate of charge flow or charge per unit time. Okay. And then I think to myself, well, I can find the current in one revolution. Basically, not really current, the charge flow in one revolution. So write that down. Q flow in one revolution. Charge. What is the charge flow in one revolution? Imagine you have your ammeter. Okay, I'm going to put my ammeter here. Pretend I can connect an emitter here. Okay. So when the emitter measures or pay attention to the charge that passes through this point, in one cycle, uh, this Q will pass through, followed by this, followed by this, and then this. So there are four Q that will pass through a particular point, a given point along the disk. So the charge flow in one revolution is four Q. So hence, the charge flow in n revolution will be equal to 4q times n. So since current is charge flow per unit time and you have n revolutions per unit time, so the total charge will be 4q multiplied by n revolution. And how long did it take for you to rotate t? Okay, so the unit time is 1 per unit time. Uh, so when you see this per unit time, T is equal to one second. So it's one second, you turn N times. So you can substitute one, or you can see the answer is A. All right. So it may look very complicated, but just think about your basics. I just need to know at a given time, how much current, I mean, how much charge flow through a given point. Or if you remember the theory video, how many marbles flow through this green color cross. Okay, so I know in one cycle, one rotation, I get four, four cube. And I know in a unit time, so when I see unit time, it's just a fancy way of saying one second la, to help your brain a bit. You know how like velocity, let's say three meter per unit second. So one second, we move three meters. So one second, I rotate n times. Rotate one time, I get 4Q. Rotate n times, I, rate, I get 4Q times n in a unit time or in one second. So this n revolution per unit time, you can say t equal to one second, n revolution or n cycle. So just multiply. Pretty easy. All right, that's it for this example. I'll see you in the next one. Think big. Bye-bye.